Tarzan of the Apes, from the novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs, with Mr. James H. Pierce as Tarzan and Miss Joanne Burroughs as Jane Porter. While searching for his daughter, Jane, Professor Porter and his party are captured by cannibals. They establish themselves as miracle workers, however, by predicting rain. In gratitude, the cannibals offer them freedom. Jane Porter has been saved from the cannibals by Tarzan. To escape a tropical thunderstorm, they go to the hut by the river. While there, Tarzan digs out of his arrow case the famous Greystoke locket. Now, are you ready? Hold your breath. In the little cabin built by Lord Greystoke 20 years before, Tarzan and Jane Porter stand facing each other. The pale, flickering, yellowish light cast by the oil lamp only serves to emphasize the bare crudeness of the surroundings. Jane looks at the Greystoke locket in her hand. Tarzan watches, a puzzled look in his eyes. He takes the locket and hangs it about Jane's neck. No, no, I can I can't. You mustn't give me the locket. Jane, no like? It's not that, White Skin. But you don't know. You can't know what significance lies behind a woman's acceptance of this locket. I can't bear it. Jane takes the locket from her neck and examines it closely. The diamonds flash and sparkle as she presses the two tiny catchers that open it. Tarzan leans forward, tense with excitement. Ah, beautiful. All the many, many years he has had this locket, he never knew till now that it could be opened. Their heads together, Jane and Tarzan look at the two ivory miniatures encased in the two halves of the locket. Lord Greystoke and the beautiful Lady Alice. You, Jane, know? Yes, my skin. Cecil's uncle and aunt. Of course, you don't know Cecil. That is not my name. If we ever find Daddy, you'll meet Cecil. Why, white skin, what is this? Another package of leaves? This, same as, same as man in locket. Another portrait. Another portrait of Grayson. But where did you get them, White Skin? White Skin find here. Many, many find here. White Skin find he is man. No ape. Here. Find Locket. All find here. Of course. How stupid of me. You found the box in the hut. In the cupboard. I should have thought of that before. You know, there's quite a resemblance between you and this portrait. But of course... That's just imagination. What, Jane? Nothing, White Skin. I was just talking to myself again. Look, look. Rain stop. Look. Yes, you're right. I'm glad. Although for the moment I was so taken up with these that I hadn't noticed. Now, we go back jungle. Well, White Skin, before we do, if we must, I vote for a swim first. Swim? Swim? Go in, in water, creek, river. And Jane, as she says the word swim, demonstrates her meaning to Tarzan. The ape-man's face lights up as he catches what she means. Ever since that day so many years ago when he had taken refuge from Sabor by jumping into the river, swimming has been one of Tarzan's keenest delights. He turns to Jane. Jane swim? Jane want to come back hut? No what? Go jungle? Do we have to go back to the trees, White Skin? I feel much safer at the hut. And then, if Daddy comes back? Why, what's that you've got, White Skin? This? White Skin make. Before, day when Jane... Father, many men come, white skin hut, white skin make. That printed warning, the warning we found on the hut door the day we landed. You, you wrote it? Then, but I don't understand. Mine, all mine, hut, locket, all belong white skin. But, but this warning is signed Tarzan of the Apes. How can you say this is yours? Tarzan of the Apes understands English, and, well, I've had to teach you... Oh, I don't know what to think. Tarzan. Tarzan of ape. White skin. All same. Tarzan, white skin. Same as. You. You, white skin. Tarzan of the ape. Back in the cannibal crowd, the black witch doctor sits in his hut brooding. His hatred of these whites who have discredited him knows no bounds. His twisted, misshapen body writhes and shakes with pent-up fury as his spies tell him of the White Party's preparations to leave. I'm really quite worried about Clayton. Donald, do you think his illness will hold us up? I think not. He has just a slight touch of fever. What Mr. Clayton needs is action. 
the strain of doing nothing, of waiting for something to happen, to gather with his feverish touch, have proved too much for him. Once we are on the move, he will rapidly recover. Uh, you don't uh, think, then, that there's anything really to worry about? I do not say that, monsieur. This African fever is a dangerous thing. Sometimes it kills almost without warning. Again, its slow ravages are, are of such a nature that nothing seems to cure or stop them. Is there anything at all that we can do? Get him into the hands of the ship's doctor as quickly as possible. That is the only thing I can suggest. Save him from as much excitement as possible. And, monsieur, contradict him as little as is possible. But, but come, let us finish our preparations and leave. I shall await monsieur Clayton. Uh, no need to, Donald. I'm awake. The thought that we're leaving this place is like a tonic. I feel a little dizzy and lightheaded, but I'll be all right in a short time. And you see, monsieur, it is as I said. The quicker we get away, the better. Uh, uh, do you suppose the chief will permit us to take our arms? I, I, frankly, I don't feel at home now unless I am carrying a rifle. Mm. So far, the chief has raised no objection. Uh, my men are getting everything ready now. And uh, have you given any thought as to what we shall do after leaving here? I continue our search for Jane, of course. Uh, we, we, monsieur Creton, I understand, but... After all, the African jungle is a large territory. I should suggest uh, yes, sir, no. that we go directly to the hut. The hut in the clearing. There is a possibility that we may come across the person Monsieur Philander believes is Tarzan of the apes on our way there. And if not, what then? I would say that some of us remain at the hut, uh, await the arrival of the cruiser. You mean to look after me, Donald? Oh, no. I'm going to search if I have to do it alone. Uh, but, my dear Monsieur Philander... How can you suggest such a thing? Don't you understand that I'm in love with Jane? Every minute she's alone now, in that jungle. Now, now, Clayton, Clayton, we understand. Down no merely meant that until you have recovered your strength, it, it would be better if you were in the hut instead of out in the jungle. Well, what can have happened now? Voila! Here comes that uh, Very much upset, too. Oh, Excited. Oh, I hope that nothing else has happened to prevent our leaving this rotten hole. Oh, no. Message, here come. White devil gun, white men tub, go cave. What? What is that, Donna? A messenger has just brought word that Tarzan and Mademoiselle Jane have been seen at the sacred cave, the mummy cave. But goodness gracious, oh, what could they be doing there? Quant à moi, monsieur, I do not believe it. There is no thing at the cave that Tarzan of the apes could want. No, no, monsieur, it is a trick of that witch doctor. But if the witch doctor just wanted to trick us, he could have sent the message secretly. And anyway, we can't afford to ignore the message. The natives have taken it seriously. Look at them. The whole tribe is ready to leave. And that is just why I think it is a plot. The witch doctor could achieve three things by inventing such a lie. Three things, Donald? Yes. Firstly, the cave is taboo. If the natives think that Tarzan of the apes and Mademoiselle Jane have broken the taboo, they will kill them on sight. Great Scott, do you think that, Donald? Yes, I do. And secondly, the witch doctor is so infuriated with us that nothing would suit him better than to lure us there and trap us. But, Donald, we know the way out of the cave now. True, and our friend the witch doctor knows that we... We know it. But, but what good will that do him? He probably has some sort of surprise awaiting us. And then again, if he can put us out of the way, this time definitely, and do it in the cave, he reestablishes himself in their esteem. But then, when your advice is to ignore the message. It is. Oh, but oh dear, dear, we can't afford to ignore it. If we uh, didn't go, and it turned out that Jane was Well, there. I'm not going to ignore it. I'm going. I don't know what to say. I feel that Don was right, but then I agree with Archimedes. We I'm not going to wait any longer. These natives are pining out of the compound now. I'm going. Very well, monsieur. I, I shall say no more. Of course, I cannot let you go alone. While Professor Porter and the White Party hurry toward the cave, Jane and Tarzan make their way to the river. After that horrible cannibal village, the jungle is almost, almost peaceful. If I only knew that Daddy and Cecil and Mr. Philander were safe, I'd be content. Safe? Out of danger. Not having to be afraid anymore. Oh, Tarzan, you don't know what fear is. You don't know what it is to be afraid. I don't believe that you ever think that anything is dangerous. It is just all a part of your life. Talons, fangs, death, hunting and being hunted. The jungle. You are the jungle. And you are so sure of yourself. Like the lion. Yes, you are very much like the lion, Tarzan. You're wonderful. <laughs> if I'm not careful, I'll be falling in love with you. Love? Now, you would pick up that one word, wouldn't you? Why couldn't you want to know what falling means instead? Tarzan, no falling. Way up, come down. Bad. Tarzan, not no love. Jane, tell Tarzan. Now, look here, young man. 
We started out for a swim, and we're getting way off the track. Much, much too far off the track. Now you swim here, and Jane go upstream a little way and swim. You understand? Tarzan, swim here. Tarzan, swim here. Love. And see that you do swim here. As Jane reaches the little pool surrounded by trees where she has swum before, she pauses a moment, standing on a log that projects out over the water. How quiet and lovely and peaceful. She's fallen into the stream. And what is that on the other side of the pool? That long body streaking torpedo like through the water straight toward Jane. She turns. She sees it. Gimla, the crocodile. She fights out for the shore. She's all holding with terrific speed, but she'll make it. No, no, she won't. The bank is steep and slippery. She's part way out. She slips back into the dark water. Can Tarzan, even with his superhuman speed, reach Jane's side in time? Darno and the White Party are fairly sure that they're walking into a trap, but this time, with their eyes open, can they outwit the witch doctor? <laughs> <laughs> 